and hello once more ladies and gentlemen boys and girls welcome to episode 30 of the druids dozen yeah my name's john wisby um some people call me the rock druid and uh basically this is a dozen albums picked for my collection and waved in front of you i do am a dj um i do a couple of radio shows there's the uh, sunday rock show on bcfm radio in bristol and the rock druid show on astro radio earth um links are going to be down there on youtube over there on facebook so if you want to check the shows out and tune in for some rock and roll and metal and that feel free but uh without further ado let's plow in with today's offerings for my record collection gonna kick off with this one yeah this is one this uh silver dreams golden reality by Devadip Carlos Santana, one of Santana's religious solo works. There's uh, the front. There's the back with the gold promo thing um, up there for those of you that are interested in such stuff. Open it up. There's the inner sleeve. pull this out lovely well really well packaged this album there's this one there with his with a buddha on there and a buddha in close-up and on here you got some lyrics and uh album sleeve credits and all that lot now i better get me glasses i forgot me glasses again i've done that for a couple of weeks where are me glasses there's a pair of glasses that'll do now I'll admit, hand on heart, when it comes to the guitars, guitarists, I am a, I am a complete. I'm not a Satanist. I'm a Santanaist. Um, there, ever since I first heard Carlos Santana playing, I have been in love with the guy's technique, his uh, style, his songwriting, his, um, you know, his smoothness, his kind of just approach and phrasing is, my opinion, peerless. And on this album, he puts in probably his best ever, or some of his best ever work, in my opinion. This album came out in uh, 1979. And as I said, it's um, one of a couple of albums that he did under the name Devadip Carlos Santana. And it's primarily kind of an, a work of, um, where the kind of songs ex explore Buddhist philosophy. I'm not... Um, heavily into Buddhism or any kind of religion so a lot of it goes straight over my head but the music just goes straight in my ears and sticks it's absolutely brilliant um, so in my humble opinion possibly his strongest album um, well one of his best albums of all time and yes I have heard of Braxus and Caravan Sarai and Moonflower etc they're, they're all great records but this one, I don't know. Um, it kind of bounces along. Um, you know, it opens up, you've got this sort of like section called The Chosen Hour Arise Awake and Light versus Darkness. Um, just kind of a beautiful piece of you know instrumental most of this album is instrumental there's only about three tracks on here that have any lyrics um a lot of it's very dreamy very trippy very jazzy in places um you've got uh probably the best of the two, like, two or three songs on here is, is a probably thing called three is the morning sun very typical carlos santana up tempo you know kind of uh feel good track however in my opinion the album's killer cut is the closing song uh is it called song for a song for devadip in which it's an instrumental piece um quite a nice smooth kind of mid-tempo track but there's a solo on there that is to die for i mean you know 
I've spoken to other Santana fans about this album. I mentioned Song for a Devil Depp, and they all go, ah, the one with Lee Solo. Um, probably one of Carlos Santana's best ever lead breaks. Um, I'm trying to think of the keyboard player's name. Um, oh, Chris Dime, I think his name is. Oh, no, it's... Uh, Nardra Machil Warden, uh, sort of this Hammond organ, does this Hammond organ playing, and you know, the song is basically a duel between Santana's guitar and the organ, with the rest of the band kind of joining in and bouncing off them and firing riffs around. And I used to own this cassette on tape. There's one section where the solo goes, do it, do it, do it, do it, and I used to own this on cassette. And I thought that's some interesting step work until one day I'm playing on a ghetto blast where the batteries are going and the tape was running a bit slow and I suddenly realised that those what I thought were steps is actually filling in every note on the scale in between. It's doodlip, 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 doodlip. Absolutely piece of genius work to play that fast yet keep it so smooth and melodic. Yet my favourite uh, album that Mr Carlos Santana has ever been involved in um, yeah, I do love a lot of the others as well, but this one to me is a hidden gem amongst his work. Not often mentioned, but one that should be in everybody's collection, you know, because it's just an amazing piece of music. 1979, David Ip Carlos Santana uh, won this Silver Dreams Golden Reality. Brilliant. Okay, next up we shall reach for a CD and we'll have this one. You can see it, I'll get the sleeve out in a minute and you can have a look better. There's the front. There's the back. Pop it open. No, nothing of interest behind the disc. But there's the disc. Pull this out though. This is the booklet. There's the cover properly. This is uh, Dead Centre by Self Torture. And in here you have it's mainly lyrics. Actually, it's nearly all lyrics. Yeah, it's basically all lyrics. There's a little bit of album info, not a said band pick on the back. Now, um, this album uh, came out in 2006, and it's uh, by, say, a band called Self Torture, and they're Turkish from Ankara. And uh, these guys, I don't know if they're still going, but... Um, you know, at the time, these guys were one of the leading lights in the Turkish extreme metal movement. Um, one of the first bands that, when I first started uh, doing the BCFM show, and I started looking at, um, decided I was going to try and, uh, BCFM is a community radio station. We have lots of um, shows aimed at ethnic minorities, etc. And I thought I'd try and reflect that in the rock show, because, you know, rock is often seen as a Western white, kind of genre and it's not you know there's bands from all over the world so i decided i was gonna i still do it i go i look all over the world looking for bands to represent kind of you know you metal from places you wouldn't normally get and you know i kind of played Botswana and metal and you know prog from kenya etc and uh but I say found out that one of the first things i started looking at was the turkish extreme metal scene Got a couple of albums through from, uh, trying to think of the name of the label. Anger, Anger Epidemic Records, that's right. They sent me a little batch of CDs, including this one. Um, let's say Self Soldier, Dead Center, Out of Anchor, extremely heavy, extremely brutal. Um, you know, we're, we're talking kind of, um, oh, I don't know, kind of, you know, you're talking like Napalm Death, deathness of heaviness but yeah these guys aren't grindcore these are metal for the extreme 
Um, the opening cut on here, Hate, Anger, Fury. An astoundingly heavy cut that just takes no prisoners. And that just lays out the, the kind of scene for the album there on. Um, it just goes on cement. The title cut, Dead Centre. Intense, intense piece of work. Um, elsewhere, um, Pick Up the Fallen, Still Down very very heavy one of the heaviest albums in my collection one of the most intense in my collection as well but on the other hand it's just very very listenable i really do like this um you know it's an album i do the hoover into so uh you know it's kind of um got that kind of man kind of vibe to it um praise to the guys that do it uh, that perform on here um yeah, there's uh, Mehmet Stevenson on vocals, uh, Henke Yamis on guitar, Engin Kamakot on bass, and uh, Semir Onek on drums. Talented guys know how to kind of uh, knock out a riff. They know how to channel anger and aggression into their music, and the world's a better place for it. Yeah, 2006, it came out. Should be still available. Um, I think the band are still going and uh, yeah recommended Dead Sensor by Self Torture good stuff ok next up we'll have this one right this one this album cover is black this is blacker than the blackest thing ever and I could go on talking about the, uh, you know, kind of uh, reproducing the sequence from the movie that this is a soundtrack album for, but no real point. There's the front. There's the back. And if I open this up, all will be revealed. There's the inner sleeve there. Yeah, this is the soundtrack from This Is Spinal Tap, performed by well, Harry Shearer and Friends, a.k.a. Spinal Tap. The non-existent studio uh, previous albums there. Um, the Rockopedia Botanica Century. Slide this out. There's the uh, picture sleeve. Um lyrics and um well what's that what's that to say about this um just one of the greatest not only greatest comedies but one of the greatest rock movies ever made um i saw this <coughs> i went to see it on a date when it first came out, a little art house cinema in Bristol called the Watershed, and um, don't know why I it up, but yeah, it's black in it. Um, yeah, at the Watershed Cinema, really enjoyed it. Went back the following day to see it again, and then a couple of days later, a couple of mates said, "God, oh, that Spinal Tap film's quite good. Do you want to go and see it?" Well, I've seen it twice already, but I'll go and see it again. So I saw it three times in about a week. Um, it's one of the ones I do possess it on DVD, which I watch periodically. Um, I watch it every time it's on telly. It is, and it's one of these films that, yeah, I can quote verbatim from. But every time I see it, I'm finding new gags. It's that, comp it's that, brilliant. Um, obviously, you know, it's pe it's produced by uh, Harry Shearer, etc. Um, uh, yeah, Harry Shearer, uh, Guest McKean, um, Christopher Guest. Yeah, uh, sorry. Christopher Guest, Michael McKean, Harry Shearer playing the two guitarists and the bass player. Um, and the good thing is, on this, they play the music themselves. And it's not bad. Um, you only actually sit down and listen to this record as an album in its own right. Um, you know, some of the songs, okay, it is kind of done tongue-in-cheek and, you know, they're played, you know, you, it's played for laughs, you know what I mean, like you've got Big Bottom, where it's all kind of nothing but bass, you know, kind of bottom, bass, etc. Um, 
then you got kind of um uh, you know tracks like hell hole um tonight i'm gonna rock you yeah, my only personal favorite on here rock and roll creation in the film it's the sequence with harry shearer in the uh pod where he gets trapped um you know the legendary stonehenge with uh you know kind of a stone 18 inch high stonehenge monolith being squashed by a dwarf um you know it just you know i'd put a smile on my face just even thinking about the songs like i said they're actually quite well played um they're not brilliant they're a lot better than the uh, bad news um material but there again you know bad news is a slightly different kettle of fish to um spinal tap which just as funny but uh, coming at the humor from a different angle but anyway um i think most people have seen the film but you know, i do recommend that you check out this soundtrack album um and give it a listen as an album in its own right because in places it really does stand up yeah uh 1984 uh this is spinal tap the original soundtrack great stuff okay next up gonna go a bit punk there we go there's the front there's the back no there's no inner card or anything but this just pops open come on come out there's the uh, gatefold and there's the disc yeah this is 2009's action reaction by the Bolsheviks um, dealt with their first album uh, nuclear dogs on an earlier episode list uh, blog blog but um, I thought I was playing this one for my own pleasure uh, the other day and I thought I'd include it in this week's show the second and to date final complete studio album by the Bolsheviks although um, since they've uh, since split and then reformed um, I've been assured by the guys there is a new album in the pipeline somewhere well, they did do an Outsakes album um, oh, about a year ago, which I'll come to on another future show, yeah. Um, but yeah, Bolsheviks, classic Bristol punk band. Um, just uh, a bit of a super group, you know, kind of uh, got the legendary Paul Lux, who's one of the best front men I've ever seen, ever. Uh, front, you, know, you know, and I have seen Freddie Mercury and Rob Alford, etc. on stage, you know. <laughs> Even Freddie Mercury can't hold a can't hold a candle to Paul Lux. Rest of the band are kind of veterans of the Bristol punk scene. Um, been in several other outfits before the Bolsheviks, and uh, just absolutely come together, make one of the kind of perfect punk bands. They're kind of they're, yeah, they're not an intense political punk band. Um, more kind of social comment than political comment. Um, tracks on this one you got uh plastic fantastic my favorite cut on the album is the opener wild west um inspired by a banksy mural on stokescroft in bristol called mild west you got dingo stole my name uh take me to the river not it's not the uh classic take me to the you know the fog out number it's uh, one of their own uh find my way the need step down outlawed every track on here is a bit of a banger this is pogo tastic um kind of punk city a go-go and um yeah should be it any discerning punk rockers collection and if you ever get a chance to see the bolsheviks live i plead i'm um, pleading with with you that you go and do so because uh you know what they can do on what they can do on cd they can more than do on stage uh twofold so yeah 2009 action reaction by the bolsheviks punk classic okay next up we'll have this one now this is a bit of, of an obscurity um this album took a lot of tracking down for me 
Um, this is a, a band called uh, What Is It by an outfit called Underneath What. Um, band, I think, were from London. I may be wrong. Um, I should have looked it up before I came before I started recording. But uh, um, hey, that's part of the exercise of doing these videos is to exercise my grain matter, so I don't want to cheat too much. Um, three piece kind of um, semi goth sludge rock band, best way of putting it. Slightly kind of, you know, sort of got a bit sleaze rock to them. I came across these, oh god, this must have been 1988 89, um, because this album's 89, um, it probably was 89 actually. Uh, they were the they were a support band for the Dogs the Moor. Now I'm a massive Dogs the Moor fan. Yes, Dogs the Moor albums will show up on this uh, vlog at some point in the future. But um, you know, these are one of the occasions where you see a support band and you think, bloody hell, I want to know more. Um, I couldn't find more. I managed to get hold of a single of theirs called Firebomb Telecom, which was a great track. But then, trying to track down the album, it took me several years, and I eventually managed to get hold of a pr promo copy in a second -hand, on a second-hand record store somewhere in, I think it was Birmingham, was it Manchester? Somewhere up north anyway, well, further north than Bristol. Anyway, there's the back as well. And if I pull this out, you've got this kind of, um, the sleeve note suggests this stream of consciousness kind of green ink almost impossible to read blurb um, that you know it makes my eyes hurt looking at it so I don't think I've ever read it all the way through um, but uh, yeah it's there I'm trying to think what label this is on doesn't say on there, let's on here. What label? WEA. So uh, you know, they had quite a fairly large label behind them. Anyway, as I said, this is sleazy, gothic, sludgy, kind of almost like proto grunge rock, um, and it's brilliant. This is really good. Uh, the sec, the opening cut of the second side is the is a six minute version of. Uh, Firebomb Telecom, um, song that kind of, uh, you know, the kind of blokes on the guys, story goes, the guys on, on the uh, phone to his girlfriend, they cut him off, so he's going to firebomb the telephone exchange in revenge. Um, other tracks on here, like An Animal, Bacon Eggs, Coffee Suicide, an amazing cut. Um, their heads exploded, Johnny B. Bad. Amazing, one of the best underground albums in my collection. Don't know nap all about them. As far as I'm aware, they never released anything else, and as far as I'm aware, they cease to exist within a few months of this album coming out. Um, crying shame because they were was like a great band. I only saw them live the once, and um, I've been treasuring this album since a couple of years after that when I got it. But uh, yeah. Um, well worth a check out and if you know any more information or whatever happened to the band or the guys please let me know in the comments and um, I'll be interested to hear yeah underneath what what is it from 1989 underground gem okay next up a bit of a CD here we go uh, this is a godless rapture EP by Altus Ashram So there's the front, there's the back, there's the uh, home burnt label disc, this is a demo EP basically. Um, I'll pull this out so that you can see it outside the uh, yeah, so it's just a piece of paper trimmed off a home printer but don't let that put you off I have loads of discs like this in my collection and a lot of them or some of them like this 
Oh, gems. <clears throat> yeah, Altus Ashram. I don't know a vast amount about them, or if I did, I've forgotten. Because uh, this, uh, this came out 2007, 2008. They sent it to me again, early days of the BCFM show. Um, band out of Belfast, a uh, bit of extreme black metal. Um, just. It's black metal, it's good, it's got all the death grunt vocals, it's got the heavy kind of, almost kind of like, uh, kind of doomy in places, uh, guitar ripping. Um, can't remember who plays on it, name of the guys. And I do know they issued a full length album after this, which sadly I haven't got. Um, I have to see if I can find a copy of that, and then pff, what happened after that, anybody's guess. Um, four tracker. Probably the two best tracks on here are the opening cut, Godless Rapture, and the closer, uh, War of Attrition. But Diaria, Diaria, and Crimson Dawn, the other two cuts, equally good. Um, if anyone knows whatever happened to uh, Outer Ashram, please let me know because I'm interested to uh, find out what happened to the guys after that. But uh, yeah, 2000 and about 2007, came out of Belfast. Don't know what happened after that. But. You're going to have to do some hunting to check this down, I hasten to add. But, um, you know, I know that, look, I know, as a record collector myself, I know that some of you metalheads like a challenge. It's a challenge you want to find, but a, a worthy quest to go on. Enjoy. Okay, next up, another CD. I'm selling another bit local as well, small band as well, but a great band. And a couple of people I like to call mates. This is uh, a thing called uh, Josh and Martha Lee. It's a uh, five track mini album stroke EP and it's by a band called Platform One or Duo by Platform One. Um, there, uh, there's the front. There's the back. Pop this open. And uh, there's a little letter from uh, the guys in English and in Welsh, um, which we'll come to in a minute. Pull this out. There's the uh, young people themselves. There's a little. There's them introducing themselves and. Um, yeah there's the uh back now this lot a band i discovered in the nethley oh sorry in case you're interested there's the disc um i came out of the nethley and uh like i said my band alien stashed you we haven't been over there for a while but we used to do quite a lot of gigs around that part of wales <coughs> And um, we met up with a few people, and I got sent a kind of compilation album of some uh, bands from the Natalie music scene, which was quite thriving at the time. On there was was a was a uh, track by Lee's um, Platform One. Um, they're a folk rock duo, uh, um, brother and sister, uh, Josh and Martha Lee, hence the name of the EP. And when this was recorded, which is got to be. Oh, this has got to be about 2012, 2013. Um, yeah, or maybe a bit later than that. But anyway, they were quite young. Martha was only about 14, maybe 15 at the time. Her brother was only about 16, 17. And, um, you know, I've been in touch with the kids ever since. Sorry, kids, people. Um, and um, I watched this, I've watched them develop from a kind of quite nice strummy folky duo, which they are on here, into a kind of quite a serious folk rock, uh, folk rock project. Um, they've had various other third members come in and out at times, but, you know, and it's like when you have a kind of a tight-knit kind of sibling duo, sometimes being the spare wheel, um, yeah, it's not easy. It's not, it's not easy. I've been there myself with two brothers in the band and, being the third man and it's not always easy however 
you know, I'm not saying that it's anything against Josh and Martha because they are the two of the nicest people you'll ever meet. Um, yeah, if, musically, uh, like I said, they write their own songs. Martha writes the lyrics, Josh Rice does the music. Um, they got, uh, they, they do some songs in Welsh. There's one on here, Pan Pan Frod Hiad in, in Tifidich. Um, don't know what it means, but you know, there's something about the Welsh language when it's being sung, especially in a kind of folky vein that kind of gives it a kind of sparkly kind of feel. It's a lovely language to listen to Welsh. Um, there's uh, other ones, Worth the Risk, Not the One, Break Your Heart, Hit Send. Great songs. Um, they're, still, they're still going. They, they were based out of Bristol for a while until the COVID virus forced them to move back to Wales because of loss of work, etc. So they moved home, although, you know, they are planning to return to Bristol for a bit. They're finding Bristol a bit more central to get the gigs around the country than uh, um, sort of Kamal's and left the area. But overall, great band, one to watch out for. Um, they, they gig heavily all over the southwest on the folk circuit and as well the rock circuit as well, come to think of it. And, um, you know, so go see them live as well because they're brilliant. I've got them doing live studio sessions at PCFM and... and uh, you know, just absolutely spine singling stuff, and they're nice kids that deserve the support. So, uh, yeah, go check them out, support them, watch their videos, download their music, go see them live when uh, when gigs are back on. Yeah, this is Josh and Martha Lee by uh, yeah Platform One. Enjoy. Okay, next is next up, we'll have this. A bit more Demon. Been slowly working my way through the Demon albums in a random order uh, over this series. And uh, today I thought I'd drag this one out. 1984, I think it is. British Standard Approved. There's the front. Don't know if it'll show up on here, but it's autograph. There's the back. If I whip this out, uh, the lyrics and that on that side, and the late great Mel Spooner memorial site on there. Mel Spooner was the band's original lead guitarist, um, <coughs> was diagnosed with leukemia uh, during the... Um, Uh, ju uh, just before this album was recorded and uh, managed to finish the album died a week off, exactly a week after it was uh, the, uh, the sessions were over um, just uh, yeah he was a great guitarist and um, although Demon had managed to replace him with some other great guitarists you know there's something about the Demon albums from beyond this that's still got a to a certain extent, a mouse spoon, a hole missing. And I interviewed Dave Hill, the vocalist, and he said that, you know, he still feels the ghost of mouse spooner haunting him, the yeah, haunting demon right to this day. But anyway, coming back to this album, 1984, despite the tragic background to it, this is a follow up album to the classic album Plague from the year earlier. And um, this is the album where Demon go full blown prog rock. It's the first album to feature keyboardist uh, Steve Williams, uh, sorry, Steve Watts, um, along with uh, John Wright and Gavin Sutherland. Uh, and then John Waterhouse comes in on guitar. I can't remember who he used to be with. Um, I want to say the exploit, not the exploited, um, Discharge, but I may be wrong. But anyway, John Waterhouse does additional guitars on here as well. And, um, you know, Demon here plunge full blown into the prog rock vein. You know, earlier Demon albums are quite metal. This is very Pink Floyd. Um, they've not done anything quite this progressive since either. Um, and it's interesting to sort of like conjecture whether had Mel Spooner not died, whether this was the direction the band would have followed um, rather than kind of because after this, you've got an album called Heart of Our Time 
not bad probably the weakest of the albums though because they're trying to find their feet after spooner's death and then you've got the classics like breakout taking the world by storm etc um but yeah as like i said very very pink floyd um you've got uh chats like first class cold air um second stage proxima you know both spooner and um john waterhouse they're in places these guys are in uh i think the guy's like a full-on andy latimer mode um you know uh there's a, there's one track on here that's got any kind of real hint of kind of uh, you know the plague de uh, plague era demon and that's wonderland one of my favorite demon songs a great bouncy track about um you know that immigration into britain the whole album's a concept work um lightning in the uk under thatcher to uh, the titanic steam it was an iceberg um and you know but living in modern britain it still holds it still holds true you know um i you know growing up through the uk through thatcher and through blair and major and on through cameron and may and now through johnson it looks like i've been living in a 30 year long car crash but yeah yeah i suppose everyone says that about their com about their country especially when they're part of the excluded underclass um but anyway um musically this album is so different from nearly anything else demon have done but it's absolutely still brilliantly played um the lyrics are deep and biting um hemispheres british dad had approved the last cut where uh i'm trying to think we're talking about i'm a child out in the cold taking chances on uh i'm dreaming of the inside and after all this never again tonight to, uh turns out like this there's there's a reason and there's so much to give there's so much left there's nothing left of me they took it all away it's just powerful stuff he's going on about michael hesseltine as well and at some point in that yeah um the metalheads may find this one a little bit inaccessible prog rock fans will love it although demon fans will find this essential so yeah Demon, 1984, British Standard Approved. Damn fine record. Okay, next up, a bit more extreme metal. This is Article 19 by Skin the Pig. There's the front. There is the back. Now, nothing of interest behind the disc. There's the gatefold there. Once again. Discography. And uh, press release, etc from uh, Scratch the Surface Records, which is the label this is on. And then there's a little... Uh, basically, it's just a lyric book. Little lyric sheet there. Now, Skin the Pig. These guys, again, we're talking extreme metal <coughs> with a capital EX. Um, to the extent they kind of uh, border on hardcore territory, um, metal hardcore fusion, but they're not metalcore. They haven't got that clean singing, uh, death grunting kind of interplay between vocals that became a clip. It was interesting when it started out, but in later days of metalcore, and still to this day, becomes a bit of a cliche. But um, I say just a very, very intense album. So they were formed in Belfast, uh, mid 2000s. By the time this album came out in uh, 2010, 
the band had relocated to Manchester. Um, recorded list. They did a couple of it. I think this was the last thing they recorded. And I don't know what happened to them after this. There's a couple of EPs and that before here. Um, but yeah, just an insanely intense listen. Um, you know, people who are into bands like Converge or um, The Bled will find this right up their street. Um, yeah, I suppose Converge is a good, is a good analogy. The Converge link, the Converge sound like it influence is strong on this one, Young Grasshopper. Um, uh, tracks just come at you like hammer blows from a big hammer. Uh, cuts like Stend and Stars uh, Syndrome, I Rise You Fall, Room Room One Two One, Box Five, uh, Shadows of Broken Wings, No Man Land, No Man's Land. They're relatively short tracks. Yeah, not kind of you know micro song hardcore levels, but you know they're all about three and a half minutes long. Um, every one is really well played, really well produced, and uh, just extreme metal intense goodness. Um, yeah, let's have a look. You got uh, Matt Gary on guitar. Um, uh, also, um, uh, John Hughes on vocals, Stuart Smith on drums, another guitarist, James Montgomery, basses, uh, Alex DeWitt. Um, yeah, not much else to say. Um, band I still return to from time to time if I want some uh, heavy background noise, if I'm doing some stuff that requires heavy background noise, or oh, I just want to annoy the neighbours. Yeah, um, 2010, Skin the Pig with Article 19 for the Extreme Metal fans. Okay, next up, we'll have a bit of ZZ Top, just to kind of lighten the mood a bit. This is uh, 1990, I think it was. Recycler, anyway. Yeah, 1990 Recycler. Um, in my opinion, the album where ZZ Top returned to form after the uh, bloody awful mess that was Eliminator. Not Eliminator, Afterburner. Eliminator's a great album. Talk about that one on an earlier show. <coughs> Afterburner, I do not possess a copy of because I've heard it, didn't like it, hated it with a vengeance, took it back. Um, when this came out, uh, I'd heard the single Concrete and Steel, and then I thought, I'll give it a go. Glad I did, because this is kind of ZZ Top returning to form after yeah, most bands, and I'll allow, I'll allow most bands a duff album, and uh, ZZ Top have had layers, and on this one they came back. So just a mouthful of liquid, I think. Anyway, there is the front, great artwork. There is the back, and if I pull this out, There's uh, just a picture, some credits, etc. on there. And a nice kind of photo gallery on that side. Now, just in case you've been living under a stone for the last 40 years and you don't know, ZZ Top, classic Texan blues rockers. Um, <coughs> Uh, just kind of a three piece, yeah, like those big hits with Give Me All Your Love In and Shark Dress Man, etc. Um, still kind of going to this day, um, just knocking out classic, classic Blues Rocks albums. So, this is 1990s, and it's uh, just pretty damn good, in my opinion. Like I said, returning, returning to form after the uh, disappointing Afterburner album from a couple of years earlier. Um, cut on here, cuts on here include, uh, well, uh, there's Double Back, which you may remember from the Back to the Future 3 film soundtrack. Um, the single Concrete and Steel, uh, I think My Head's in Mississippi was another, was the other single of this album. I know I've got it on 12 inch round somewhere, so I think that was it. Um, then you got 2000 views, my favourite cut on here, Decision or Collision. 
you know, um, yeah, uh, yeah, Burger Man, um, Penthouse Eyes, lovely sort of slow blues number, um, it's just a band that know what they're good at, they know what their fans want, they've experimented, they fucked up, they admitted their mistake, and they're coming back with some, with some great music, um, yeah, just, it's easy sort of band I've always liked, uh, you know, we've got Billy Gibbs on guitar and vocals, uh, Dusty Hill on bass and vocals, and Frank Beard, the guy without the beard on drums, and, um, you know, these guys know what they're doing, and they're doing it excellently, um, not much else to say about this, really, um, I could go on and, you know, eulogise for ages, but I don't want to, I've got to do another couple of albums to drop in for the, uh, before I run out of time, so, um, yeah, ZZ Top Recycler, 1990. Brilliant. Finally, comes on to our last CD. And here we go. There's the front. There's the back. This is All Changed by Cast from 1995. Ooh. Britpop. Well, I don't know. Were Cast Britpop? I tend not to argue. I, I think the people that argue, argue genres are, well, missing the point of music. But uh, I don't know. And I really didn't pay that much attention to Britpop at the time. So... Uh, you know, I couldn't tell you whether these guys are Britpop or just loosely associated there or around about the same time. Anyway, sleeve, booklet, pictures, lyrics, credits, etc. <coughs> now, um, as, as I just said, the whole Britpop kind of 90s indie movement was something that passed me by to a certain extent um yes i was active on the music scene i was kind of doing sort of live promotions and working with a couple of promoters at the time but and we asked we did kind of get we're putting on kind of indie type bands from time to time but um you know they weren't the sort of stuff that i listened to at the time because you know grunge had put me off new music to a certain extent and I've retreated back to my 1985 metal collection and it wasn't really paying that much attention and it's only since I started doing getting back into doing the radio stuff I've become getting more exposed and like I said just like I was talking about like the American uh, contemporary metal movement last week the kind of Britpop and indie from that period from this period I'm only just catching up on and begin to find there's actual merit to it um and you know i picked this one up in the charity shop a couple of years ago uh give it a listen and it's all right i don't know that much about cast i do know there are a bunch of scousers um it's actually three from manchester i apologize to both cities but like i said not stuff i know that much about and i can't remember what it is is it um back of my mind all right promised land this contained one of their big singles but i don't know which one it is but overall it's not a bad album it's quite jingly it's it has got a kind of rocky vibe running through it which surprised me when i first played it um you know it's not all flop air student air cut um idiot dance music it's uh you know got some kind of guts and structure there's a cotton here called history which i'm which i really do like big time and um along with uh, was it four walls is another great song which i'm uh, quite fond of yeah um i know a lot of guys my age probably this and bands like blur i mean don't get me wrong before you ask i have never got oasis i still can't i tried oasis i do not like oasis i think they're a overrated bunch of plonkers my oasis feel free to disagree in the comments but just don't like oasis but you know blur really getting into pulp and that kind of thing and cast as well so 
it's an example of kind of you know if you're not really experienced a genre try them out you know you can stream online before you buy if you if, if you if you're just curious and um but i do recommend that you give them give this uh give like this stuff a, a, a shout especially this one all changed by cast because this is a kind of representative you will bring out others and wave them in front of you at some point but yeah um 1995 all changed by cast interesting brings us on to the final one our final vinyl and uh <coughs> here we go there's the front there is the back this is the thieving magpie la gaza ladra and it's by meridian If I have to swing this open, there's the inner sleeve with, um, yeah, that's the Clashing at Straws tour set there. I'm going to pull this out and it gives you a Yeah, pictures and reproductions of the of the uh, studio albums sleeves there and here I don't know what it is about EMI but I find a lot of these EMI covers the glue was just not good enough I've got to get a get me print stick out I'll do this afterwards after I finish filming I'll get me print stick out and I'll go through and I'll re-stick all these covers because they're pointing a bit but anyway, there's, um, hang on, it should go that side, Miss My Shadows, the third album, Clashing Its Draws is the fourth. Now, double live album, um, from what I can gather, it was a uh, bit of a kind of contractual obligation album, um, uh, recorded when Fish left the band, it was uh, just kind of. Um, I think he still owed them a Meridian album, so they they put this out as a kind of double. Uh, it's not really a live album; it's more of a live compilation. There's a lot of tracks on here. Um, um, it recorded apparently at various venues over between 1983 and 86. Um, there's uh, it doesn't really represent the band's live set I mean if you look at the back I mean I used to go see Meridian quite regularly back in the Fish era I saw them a couple of times in the Hogarth era but that's a different story and um, you look at the track listing you know opening up with Slam, with Slam Manar he knows you know Chelsea Monday you know they never seen them open that i've seen them open with assassin i've seen them open with actually i can't think of it. every time i've seen them i've seen them open with assassin with, with the fish era um there's no market square heroes there's no garden party <coughs> there's no um there's no incubus there's no uh um forgotten sons it's stuff that was live integral part of their live set are missing in great kind of uh, bits um, however if you get hold of the uh, if you really want to reconstruct a, a good Marillion live set you need to get hold of the 1984 real to real album as well as this and then you can maybe assemble you know something like what they used to do live I did that on a 90 minute cassette once I put together a, using this album and a um, real to real I managed to put together a kind of perfect Meridian set for me but anyway that's something I did just for the end of it years ago but anyway um, this is good it's not great though it's a bit of a um, disappointment for you know as a kind of last fish statement with the band it's a bit of a you know you expect you want, you want to go out with a bang instead you go out with a bit of a fizz a damp squib um You've got the, you know, for example, you've got the uh, 
version of Fugazi on here. Um, it's okay, but if you on one, I think it's the first or second edition of this, I looked at uh, an American uh, Marillion album, American only American Marillion release called uh, can't remember, but it's an American only kind of thing. The version of Fugazi on that which is taken from the real to real sessions is absolutely to die for. The one on here, not quite so good. Um, same goes for, uh, you know, yeah, there's a version, you know, songs like script for Jester's Tear on here. Again, I've seen them play it better. Uh, you know, ending on White Russian, which is uh, on the end of the th last side, which isn't their greatest track. In my opinion, it's all right, but not brilliant. Opening with, uh, uh, yeah, it just doesn't feel right. It sounds like a compilation rather than a live set, and uh, you know, it's downhill. You know, it suffers for that. Um, you got the uh, the second side here is side one of Misplaced Childhood, which is a good rendition. And apparently, I've not got the CD uh, version of this, but if you get the CD version, you get the four Misplaced Childhood, both sides on there, which is uh, great. But I saw the Misplaced Childhood tour, and just seeing them going on and playing a 45 minute concept work before they did anything else was something quite impressive. Um, yeah, it's not bad, the performances are okay. Um, but like I said, they could have done better. So, yeah, Marillion completionists um, and fish fans. Yeah, add it to your collection. But, you know, if you want to get into Marillion and you want a live album, go for Real to Real Live. Um, go for the Brief Encounter EP. That's what I was thinking of as well. Some great live cuts on there. And get the studio albums. And then, only then, think about getting this. Because it's good, but it's not great. So that's it for this week. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. Um, don't forget, you can like and subscribe. It just helps spread the word. The more you like, the more YouTube recommends it to other people. And I'm not saying that because I want money or anything like that. This channel is not monetized. I just want kind of people to talk about music with. So uh, if you kind of can share it or like it or subscribe, it helps kind of bring more people in to talk about music. Um, Christmas is coming. Um, I hope everyone's going to have a... I think it's going to be a pretty rough Christmas for a lot of us this year. I mean, I'm missing all my family and friends. Can't go and see any of them. But, uh, you know, I am going to put out a couple of special videos over Christmas um, in addition to the dozens to kind of uh, just keep in touch with people. So uh, keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, comments down there on, Facebook, on YouTube, over there on Facebook. Always good to hear from you as well. So, until next week, peeps. Oh, yeah, the radio shows are down there and over there in case you want to listen. So, um, yeah, so that's it for this week. Until next, I'll, uh, or until I start those another video, which might be in a few days' time. Um, have a great Christmas, and uh, I'll see you all soon. Love you all. Bye. <laughs>